A collection of leaked U.S. intelligence documents suggest that Ukraine's air defenses could soon run out of missiles. The reports, dating from February, appeared on social media sites and appeared to detail U.S. and NATO aid to Ukraine. Their content suggests that the U.S. has been spying on both Russia and Ukraine's military and gathering intelligence on its NATO allies. The U.S. Justice Department is scrambling to find the source of the leak, with officials saying Russia or pro-Russian supporters are likely behind it. For more, let's bring in Ben Hodges, former commanding general of the U.S. Army in Europe and senior advisor with Human Rights First in Frankfurt. Uh, general Hodges, thank you so much for rejoining us here on the program. These reports suggesting that Ukraine is just weeks away from running out of missiles to support its air defense network. Situation sounds dire, is it? Well, Sarah, thank you. Um, yes, of course it is uh, significant in, in that uh, Ukraine is running low on their air and missile defense um, systems and, and the ammunition for those systems. Um, and it highlights the fact that uh, uh, we need to help Ukraine deny sanctuary for Russia in Crimea and other occupied parts of Ukraine from which they are launching aircraft and drones and missiles. So part of this is the need to get them more ammunition, but also to deny the sanctuary from which Russia is able to launch these attacks. The leaked documents, uh, General Hodges, also suggest that there is concern that, that Putin could use any weakness here to use his fighter jets, his considerable air power to change the course of the war. Do you share that well, concern? Yeah, that would be a, that would be a concern. Um, but I think that, uh, first of all, the, the Russian Air Force um, has not impressed me for the last 14 months. Even though they had huge numerical superiority, it's clear that they don't have the, the training or the, um, the ability to really um, achieve air superiority. This is something that the German Air Force, the British Royal Air Force, the U.S. Air Force, we would have done this in the first days of any conflict, especially with that kind of numerical superiority, the Russians were not able to do that. So it's not just because of the brave and uh, very competent Ukrainian air defense. It's because I don't think the Russians really know how but, to do this. Yeah, but, but General Hodges, I mean, the, the whole point here, though, is that if there is a break in that defense, could there be a mm. window for Putin? And don't these leaks essentially give him a bit of a playbook now on how to have a window to defeat the Ukrainian military? Well, uh, to be honest, Sarah, I, I think the Russians already knew all this. This this is information that's come to light for us, but none of this will be new to the Russians or to the Ukrainians. Um, so yes, of course, there's a vulnerability if, if we're not able to help Ukraine uh, get more munitions or more systems for their air and missile defense. But uh, I think they will have already anticipated what those vulnerabilities are. And again, I think that there are other ways to, to prevent Russia from exploiting a vulnerability, and that really is about denying them the places from which their attacks are uh, being launched. That means Crimea, that mm. means Donbass, that means ships at sea. Uh, and and to that to that end, Ukraine has very much been calling for fighter jets to support its own air power. So far, only Poland, uh, we know, and Slovakia have delivered fighter jets to the country. Uh, meantime, Germany, the U.S. have dismissed calls to send F-16s. Uh, just back in January, Chancellor Schultz even shot down uh, such calls as irrational. In light of what we know now, what is your message to the German chancellor? Your message to the U.S. president? Yeah, I don't understand why um, the American, the U.S. administration and the German government and others um, still stop short of saying we want Ukraine to win and we're going to give them the things that they need to win. I mean, we're talking about thousands of Ukrainian civilians that have been killed by these missile attacks. They're, they're not going after uh, Ukrainian defenses. They're going after civilian targets. Why? Why is it so difficult for us to go ahead and take that next step to provide the capabilities that would help protect thousands of European civilians? That's what this is about. And so um, whether it's F-16s or longer range precision weapons, the things that are needed to help stop Russia from being able to kill so many innocent people, um, I think the United States, 
Germany, others need to do more. Uh, but it really comes down to what do we want Ukraine to win or are we just trying to drag this thing out? So then given that, um, how do you assess U Ukraine's potential? It's been widely reported and expected um, that they could now be poised to launch a fresh spring offensive. Um, they, they're getting um, new, more modern, more capable tanks. How do you expect this to play out over the next months? So I, I think right now, just despite the, the concerns that, that you and I are discussing uh, this morning, we actually are in what I would call the, the calm before the storm. Um, the Ukrainians have stopped Russia. Russia has no other offensive capability, nothing with which they could launch a new offensive. The weapons that they're pulling out of storage now are about my age, uh, which would be 65. Um, so I think they, are, they have transitioned into a defense to try and hang on to what they have. Uh, the Ukrainian general staff has done a very good job of preparing, I think, for this, what will be a counteroffensive when the conditions are set. That means weather, uh, when the ground is dry, but mainly when they, they have done enough training and they have built up the logistics. And I think we're going to see an attack that will be very professional, very effective, and its purpose will be to, I believe, uh, isolate Crimea uh, and set the conditions for the eventual liberation of Crimea okay. later this year. Later this year. Um uh, just quickly before we go, I'd like to pick up on what you just said there, General Hodges, because you have, in general, been very optimistic about Ukraine's ability to repel the Russian invasion and even march on Crimea. Um, earlier, um, a couple of months ago, you said that you expected that to happen by summer. Do you stand by that? Yeah, by the, by the end of August, uh, Ukraine will have been able to liberate Crimea if, and I've always um, included this caveat, if we provide them the long range precision weapons that they need to do that. Yes, absolutely, they can do that. Ben Hodges, retired U.S. Lieutenant General, thank you so much uh, for joining us to share that expertise and uh, that perspective. We appreciate it. Thanks for the privilege.